Okay, so uh, in the last few weeks, we had a, a visit with a, a client, an executive, who was really concerned about the administration and maintenance as it relates to GitLab. So his, his concerns were really about the upgrades, the installation, what happens if I've got an issue, I, I'm, I don't have anybody that knows Ruby to, to take a look at the logs and, and to help diagnose what's going on. Some of the upgrades are really difficult, but his last touch points were really more like a year ago where the upgrade was a lot more difficult than today. And it's been a monthly upgrade. So there's so many times we have to go through this process. I struggle to support it. And so ultimately, why would I pay for GitLab when I'm having these difficulties today? And, and that was the conversation. Yeah, I totally understand. Um, uh, did you, did you um, figure out how they're um, hosting GitLab today? Yeah, just a simple bare metal server hosting GitLab Community Edition. Okay. Yeah, well, it's pretty clear that if, with, um, with the Enterprise Edition, you know, obviously that comes with uh, support, four-hour turnaround time, live upgrade assistance, and that would certainly help with, um, with some of their concerns. Um, the other thing I noticed is that, well, you know, them being on some older, older lines, the 7.x or 8.x lines, um, we need to get them up to the nine line because at that, um, with, with the release of 9.1, um, we now have the ability to do, to do no downtime upgrades, and that would certainly uh, go a long way. So, um, in your conversations, did, in your conversations, did you assess how big your organization is, and did, did you get a sense if they have a uh, an internal tool or admin team that supports their engineering teams? Yeah, they've got a couple hundred users. We've heard this in a couple conversations, and it seems to be that 200 to 500 user range. And uh, they do have a small team of people that is managing. Uh, the, the tools, uh, but the, again, they, they don't have any Rubyist uh, experience, and so that was one of the core concerns that they had. Yeah, um, yeah. So um, what's interesting there is that you know, obviously, the application is written in Ruby, but you know, managing and maintaining GitLab doesn't require that experience necessarily. I mean, especially if they're using your Omni Omnibus package, because that package is really wrapping up all the um, all the, the services and the tools required to run it so that you can essentially install it and not have to deal with any of the configuration. Yeah, I think, I think you know, to piggyback on that, we also need a conversation to consider how they're hosting it today. Maybe we can simplify the management of their platform by using something like the, the Docker containers, right? It's, it's just a different approach that may simplify things. Yeah. And in fact, with, with 10.1, you can deploy the complete Kubernetes cluster to, to GKE, right? So the, the whole idea of deploying to the cloud becomes uh, that much simpler. As we're moving to that cloud native world, perhaps at this point, they, they start thinking about a cloud deployment of GitLab or eventually even moving to GitLab.com. It'd be a good next step in reducing the overhead of them hosting all these solutions internally. Yeah, it'd be a good, good conversation to, to have with them around their infrastructure options uh, going forward. Yeah, the final challenge we heard from them was just the frequency of upgrading, right? The, the associated fear of that process based on the past. Uh, but I feel like this could be pretty easy for us to address. Yes, yeah, certainly. In, you know, in my opinion, and with with the the experience that I have with customers uh, that I work with, a, a dev shop this size, you know, a few hundred folks, the the installation should be relatively small, um, and the the option to have no downtime upgrades using the Omnibus package um, should enable them to keep up with that monthly release cycle, um, and it should be pretty straightforward. You know, that said, when you start moving into sort of the larger multi-node, high avail high availability setups, um, there, there de there's definitely some things you need to consider. Um, when, when orchestrating the upgrades. Um, I recently had a conversation with our support team and they mentioned that, you know, depending on the customer's um, ability, uh, it's a lot easier in these multi-node setups. You know, you know, imagine, you know, 15 or 20 nodes um, that are out there. It's much easier if they can, if they can um, afford a little bit of downtime, you know, maybe an hour downtime, they can turn everything off, upgrade everything across the board, turn it back on. Um, if a customer does not have, if they don't have that, um, that, that freedom, um, they can certainly go through and do a, no, a, a zero downtime uh, upgrade, but it does take some managing and orchestrating to roll those things out. But you know, again, back to our, um, our earlier conversation around um, uh, Enterprise Edition, you know, having that premium support, um, having live assistance, right? We can get our support folks um, on, on, the, on the call with them um, and help them, you know, regardless of the size of their, of their installation, we can get, get support to help them with those upgrades. And the, you know, the la you know, frankly, the last thing I want to talk about or I would talk to them about is um, uh, the frequency 
at which they have to do the to, to upgrade to GitLab. Now, obviously, we come up, we push out a release every month, right? Not everyone can um, can uh, adjust and or you know plan um, and take the time out to do an upgrade every month, and it's really a choice, right? So I have customers that are a couple of releases behind, um, so and some sometimes intentionally, sometimes just because they don't have the the, the time to the, the the time you know that month, but. Um, What's really nice about the upgrade process is that you can you can just get the latest package. You, know, you can be a couple of releases behind. You can upgrade to that that next one up and 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 move on forward. Right. So I think the next thing we'll do on the on the next call. Obviously, there's a lot of different possibilities, and it all comes down to what's the vision that you as a customer have going forward, right? So what's the customer truly trying to do? Is there an initiative around cloud deployments and, and, and those kind of things? Is there a, 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 a goal that we can support within the organization and help them simplify, help them save some money and uh, make this whole process easier for them? Because there's so many different methodologies to it. So uh, those will be our next steps. Absolutely. All right. Reach out if you have any questions uh, after your next call. Will do. Thanks.